All right, uh, thanks for coming this morning. I'm sure that this is probably the last thing people want to be talking about at this time of year. We just got through winter and we don't want to really revisit winter. So I think uh, people are a lot more interested in this topic when they're having to drive on uh, roads with drifting, blowing snow problems. So, but we're gonna we're go back to winter here um, for, for 20 minutes. So, um, so I'm gonna talk today about this uh, snow control cost benefit web tool. Uh, that we built in Minnesota. Uh, this is a, a collaborative project. Um, so some of the team members are here. Gary Wyatt, you want to wave? It's Gary Wyatt's in the back there uh, with the University of Minnesota Extension. I'm a graduate student at the University of Minnesota in Applied Economics. Um, Joey Zamora is also worked on is also working on the project, and uh, Dean Current, and uh, who's the director of the Center for Integrated Natural Resource and Agricultural Management and uh, Dan Gullickson at the Minnesota Department of Transportation. So anyone that lives in, you know, um, non-forested regions in the north, you know, have seen this before and, <coughs> and know about this problem of blowing snow that creates poor driving conditions uh, and drifts on the road, which um, inhibits mobility and causes, uh, you know, safety concerns. This is a this is a map of Minnesota here. Um, so back um, uh, about 15 years ago, um, uh, the Department of Transportation did an inventory and found 3,700 um, sites throughout Minnesota on state highways that had uh, blowing and drifting snow snow problems. And so it's a, it's a big problem. It's a big problem in agricultural areas. Um, and, and so one of the solutions is, is, is to use a snow fence. So how do snow fences work? Uh, basically, uh, the snow fences work by uh, slowing down you know, the, the speed of the air and, and creating turbulence so that that snow, that blowing snow that's um, blowing across an agricultural field will get tripped up and will be deposited uh, on the leeward side. As you can see in this picture here, that these snow fences need to be um, installed back from the roadway. If you install them too close to the roadway, you can actually have a drifting problem on the road. And so uh, a lot of times what you'll see is a, a agricultural, an annual agricultural field that's bare um, soil in the winter, and you see vegetation on the right of way, and that vegetation is actually tripping up the snow and creating uh, drifting problems on the road. So we need to put something back in in the farmer's field, so these need to be installed on private land. We have to get uh, uh, private landowners involved um, and interested in installing these snow fences. Uh, many different types of uh, snow control uh, options for snow fences here. Um, we're looking at a living snow fence. Um, this is a honeysuckle uh, planting that's protecting this highway that's up in the corner here. Gary, I think this is your son. That's right. He's not yeah, real tall. I see. I think he's middle school, middle age, uh, <laughs> probably middle school. So he's probably uh, five feet tall. So this is the kind of example. This is a really, you know, um, really good example of a living snow fence. You have these shrubby species uh, that cr create um, about 50% porosity and about eight eight feet high is a really good height for for a snow fence. You can see it catching the snow uh, on on the leeward side. Do they work? Um, so here's a picture of, a, of what, what the uh, transportation agency calls a blow ice problem. Uh, so you have these uh, warmer roadway and you get the, the, the snow blowing across the field, hits the roadway, melts, and then refuses on the roadway. And so you get these poor driving icy conditions. Uh, you can barely see it, but in this, in this picture here up in front, there's a snow, snow fence here. And so you get up, this, is, this picture is taken just minutes later, um, you know, up where this is being protected by a snow fence, and you can see the driving conditions are um, a lot different, so much different. And we hear this from maintenance uh, uh, operators and power drivers that these snow fences work. And it's actually, it's pretty amazing to see how well they, how well they work. I mean, they, they, it's, it's just impressive, that, you know. Um, but are they economical? So yes, they physically work, but does it make you know does it make sense to build them, pay for them, pay farmers to take land out of production? So what we found in our previous research project was that there is a positive return on investment. 
in some snow problem areas that we did some detailed analysis on, we found a $14 return for every dollar invested. So that's $14 in reduction in uh, maintenance and operation costs for the transportation agency because they don't have to bring their equipment out there to clear out drifting snow and they don't have to continually treat um, you know, icy conditions, low ice conditions with sand and salt um, all the time. An example of this is that in uh, northern Minnesota, or uh, northwestern Minnesota, we talked to a plot operator and she said that during a, a, a high wind conditions, she spends her entire shift treating one blowing snow problem area. Uh, so, so with these, you know, these um, 3,700 areas, a lot of time and effort goes into dealing with these blowing snow problems. Um, and as part of that research, we recommended that they expand the program to about 65% of snow problem areas, just based on the statewide assessment of the costs and benefits. And currently, right now, there's about 2% of the area that's protected um, by all, all the snow control um, uh, options. And we also recommended as part of that that there needed to be a detailed analysis for each site, because every site is so specific with the conditions, the fetch, how much snow is blowing, what kind of maintenance is done on those sites, does it have a drifting problem, does it have a blow ice problem. And because it's so site specific, uh, you know, you, we needed a, uh, a way in which, we, um, you know, uh, Gary and I didn't have to go to back again for every single site to do an analysis for, that we could give a tool to the agency so that they could do the, the analysis themselves. Uh, so this is a partnership uh, between uh, the Minnesota Department of Tra Transportation, University of Minnesota Extension and uh, Center for Integrated Natural Resources and Agricultural Management. And to make this kind of tr truly interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary program, we're also working with the Center for Transportation Studies. So this is, um, you know, cuts across multiple disciplines um, and uh, we really had to not only understand agriculture and agroforestry, but also transportation and transportation economics in order to bring this whole project together. So we have two tools that we, um, there's a tool that had already been built uh, for designing living snow fences. So that um, tool takes climatology information uh, to uh, better understand what uh, heights you need for these snow fences, how far is the setback. Um, and as part of th this research project, we built a cost benefit tool. And so we had an Excel, uh, Microsoft Excel based tool, uh, and we took that tool and we brought it to the web. Uh, and so that, that, that's the, the whole point of this project here. So we wanted with this web tool to have site and scenario specific analysis, it, you know, it conduct a full cost benefit analysis. We wanted to integrate existing data so that um, users of the tool, which are primarily um, um, operators and designers within a transportation agency, we wanted them to have access to existing data about snow problems using this the snow problem inventory, but also to have data about um, crop yields, crop rental rates, so they can have a better understanding of what the costs are and what the, uh, the payment ranges need to be for the farmers to get these practices in place. <coughs> we also want it to be usable. Again, this is cost benefit analysis and this is users who um, uh, don't, you know, as part of their normal job responsibilities, they're not, they're not conducting cost benefit analysis. So we wanted to make it, the tool as usable as possible, um, to, you know, make it uh, friendly so that they would, user friendly so they would use it. Um, like I said, the primary user is transportation agency personnel, um, project managers, operations and road design. The tool is now being used for projects of road design projects that are in 2017. So they're already thinking about, um, you know, are we going to grade this road different? So we might have snow problems, or are we going to install a living snow fence? So we have one pr project where a living snow fence is already designed into the into the project um, when the uh, you know as part of the project as the road is getting redesigned uh, in, in 2017. Um, so um, they're looking at this not only for existing problems but to prevent future problems. And it could be used, uh, it's primarily being used at the state level, but it could also be used at a county and township level. And I know that Gary's been working with uh, some counties and townships in his local area 
uh, and, and you've been kind of helping them and running them through the, the two tools uh, to get a cost benefit analysis and figure out what they can pay the farmers there to solve some of their um, problems on their local roads. So one of the solutions is uh, that we look at is living snow fences. So looking at cost of installation, maintenance, and then also um, any uh, uh, coordination that the living snow fence might have with the conservation program. So it is a conservation practice that's eligible for um, CRP money and EQIP money. Um, there's, um, and sometimes we don't have a lot of examples of agroforestry where there's somebody that's willing to put some, some money behind it to put practices on the ground. Well, this is one of them. Uh, uh, MnDOT, you know, the costs are so high for MnDOT that they're really willing to find, you know, a payment that's going to work for the landowner uh, to put these practices in place. And so the living snow fences, they're paying, they're uh, covering the rest of the cost share, so 100% cost share. They're paying a maintenance payment that's indexed by inflation, so it goes up every year. And they're, they're matching the soil rental rates. They're paying, so these farmers are getting 200% of the soil, soil rental rate. So, you know, you can see how interested the, the transportation agency is in getting these uh, practices on the ground that's going to save them money in the end. We look at some other uh, snow control solutions with the tool two, leaving standing corn uh, over the winter, structural snow fences and grading, just so that the agency can look at all these different options and assess. Uh, what's going to work best for them. So here's a uh, screenshot of the tool. Uh, on the left, left hand side here we have all, all the inputs. Right hand side is the outputs uh, for the users and the users can log into this tool, save their sites, come back, um, you know, update the analysis, complete the analysis later. On the input side we have the ability to show and hide sections. So if you have a blow ice problem and not a drifting problem, you, know, we won't, you won't have to enter any data or we won't ask any questions about drifting. Um, you know, help bubbles to tell people you know, this is the type of information that we're looking for. Uh, we also validate the, the data that they put in there. Is this the right type of data? And we also give some suggested values based on data that we have. An example here is land rental rates. So this is using USDA um, uh, survey data on rental rates in that county. Uh, so $209 an acre in this particular uh, county here. And we also have links to external resources. Uh, we have links to web links to updated prices on commodities uh, you know, for entering in uh, if the users aren't you know, uh, familiar or don't know what current prices are for um, agricultural products. The outputs here are you know, mostly um, graphical outputs, visual outputs, but we also have the ability to look at specific numbers with details, compare different solutions. So you can see here, you know, grading is really expensive, structural snow fences are really expensive. Um, you know, saying corn rolls, you know, can be relatively expensive, but you don't get the benefits, especially in Minnesota, because you're rotating with corn and soybeans. So soybean years, you get no protection. Um, so um, you know, you know, so you can compare these different solutions. And we have different agency and public me metrics like uh, internal re rate of return or cost benefit ratio so that uh, users can look at these and say, are we in the red or not? We're not in the red. So uh, this is, looks like a good place to put a, uh, a snow control solution and pay farmers to do that. And we uh, give some uh, information to the agency about payment ranges. So what should be the minimum payment for the landowner to break even? What should be the maximum payment so that you can still see some cost savings? And we give them a range of payments. We don't tell them what the payment should be. That's a, you know, a negotiation between the agency and the, and the, the landowner. So it's a web tool and it's compatible on any uh, modern browser. Uh, we also built a tool so it's smartphone and tablet friendly. So this tool does work on um, any smartphone. Uh, so it's not it's not a native smartphone application, but it's a it's a web application. So you do need internet access to use it. Um, we have a user's guide uh, to help uh, users if they need more de detailed information about how uh, uh, how the tool works. Um, so I want to. Uh, 
thank MnDOT. Um, they've been very generous and very helpful in uh, developing these tools. And with our research, we have a number of different research programs, uh, projects going on related to agroforestry and living snow fences in Minnesota, especially Dan Gullickson. Uh, so Dan Gullickson is a forester with the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Um, and he's been really instrumental in, um, he, he runs their, their living snow fence program, um, but he's been really instrumental in, in, in uh, assisting us in applying for, for grant funding uh, from MnDOT to do these research projects. Um, all these other folks from Net and MnDOT are maintenance operators or users of the tool who have given us feedback um, and uh, helped us understand the, uh, kind of the, the best way to develop this tool um, and move forward with it. We also like to thank Justin and Tim from SUNY ESF. Uh, they also have a cost, an Excel-based cost-benefit uh, tool specifically um, looking at willows as, as snow fence, and so we had them um, involved in the project and uh, providing feedback uh, for us uh, and, and really helped kind of keep, keep the tool moving and make sure that we were um, in, uh, assessing everything that we needed to uh, when looking at uh, costs and benefits. And then the U of M Agroforestry class, uh, Jomi Zamora was the professor there, and uh, they provided a lot of good feedback. They're um, you know, undergrads, and so they use the web all the time, so they were able to tell us, this doesn't work right, I, I wouldn't expect things to work like this. So they, even though they don't, um, aren't familiar with transportation and transportation economics, um, they were really helpful in understanding um, how we can make this tool user friendly. Uh, so for more information, you can go to this website, snowcontroltools.umn.edu. Um, right now, that link goes to the tool itself, but in another couple months here, that will go to a website, an informational website. We'll have all sorts of information about uh, living snow fences. We'll link to the design tool, the cost-benefit tool, um, have a, a webinar that we did, uh, have some how-to videos, um, and if you're interested in using the tool, um, I mean, you can use it. Anyone can go on the, the site and use the tool um, as kind of a read-only um, uh, scenario. But if you're really interested in, you know, setting up a user account, maybe getting your agency involved in, in, in using this tool to do assessments, uh, you should contact the Center for Transportation Studies. So we we developed this tool and now. We have moved it um, over to them, and they're going to be the administrative and maintenance home for the tool. Um, it made the most sense given who the users are and, and the context of it. Um, and so you contact them, cps.umn.edu. Thank you, David. Yep. We've got time for about one question. Jim? In your Cost benefits of analysis, you have to have the costs um, and expenses associated with all of the operations there in the road. Mm -hmm. One of those would be fuel. Yes. Do you have numbers on the amount of fuel used by these different pieces of equipment? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Recognize that then you could then get the measure of the emission of carbon from that equipment, which is another benefit flowing from this operation, and one that is particularly important to climate change discussions. Is that a piece of information we're missing? Yeah, so we do as, as part of that, just so the, I think I supposed to repeat the question, but so you, you're, you know, wondering if we have, uh, you know, fuel usage information, and from that we can get uh, a greenhouse gas information, and, and whether we can provide that as part of the tool. So we do, um, actually calculate that, and as you can see in this, this uh, cost versus benefits, as the benefits, we have these carbon reduction benefits. So we are taking um, fuel usage, translating that to carbon dioxide emissions, and putting um, a price on what's the value of the reduction of those, those CO2 uh, emissions. Um, so we are you know, calculating the benefits of that. We do need to do a better job with the tool of of giving users access to the physical outputs of the tool. I think we've done a good job of what's the monetary outputs of the tool, but we need to do a better job of uh, 
how much, how many pounds of salt can be used. Uh, we have a big um, salt pollution problem in, in Minnesota, um, and so you know, giving these physical outputs, how many you know tons of CO two has been reduced? How you know? I think that's one area we need to head with the tool is is more information. The tool can provide that already calculates beyond just the, the costs and benefits and just the dollar value. It's like David again. Gary has some uh, cards and brochures back here at the back table. Um, oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.